You coming? You can turn around. There you go. What a good girl. Hey guys, it's Shara and Lucy from Woodshop Diaries. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to build this simple modern outdoor chair from just a few two by fours and some dowels. As you can tell, this project is Lucy approved. So we're really excited to share it with you. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. A while back, I built some modern outdoor chairs that we've been using pretty much daily for the last several years. And when I say we, I mean mostly Lucy as this is her favorite hangout spot while I'm working in the shop during the day. Every spring, I think I need to refinish these chairs and every year I keep putting it off. So due to my neglect, they've started looking a little rough and I thought it might be time to spruce things up with a new chair for the porch. So for this project to hopefully keep it looking nice a little longer than my older ones, I opted for cedar for the frame and seat slats and I used some poplar dowels for the rails, but they'll be painted over to give it some extra protection from the elements. I'm also sharing how to make your own cushion at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. I have free plans for this build with diagrams, dimensions, and details at the link in the description if you would like to build your own. All in all, for each chair, I use three 2x4x8 boards, a 1x6x8 board, and I'll explain why I use tongue and groove later, and three 6 foot 3 quarter inch dowel rods. This chair design was super simple. I started out by cutting all of my chair frame pieces from the 2x4s. Now, normally I don't recommend cutting all of your pieces at once, as in most cases, it's best to cut to fit as you build. However, since this design is so basic, cutting them all at once should be fine. I provided all of the measurements in the free plans linked below. So I cut the three pieces that go around the top for the back and armrest, the four pieces of the seat frame and the four legs and set the leftover piece of two x four to the side to use later. I set the legs and seat frame pieces to the side to assemble the top section first. The top consisted of just two armrests and a back stretcher that goes between them. To keep things simple, I used a pocket hole jig to drill pocket holes into the ends of this back stretcher and use exterior rated pocket hole screws like these Craig Blue Coats, which I will link below, to attach these three pieces together. Once this top was together, I used some two and a half inch exterior screws to attach the legs. I attached two at the back corners and I made sure to pre-drill these holes before driving the screws to prevent splitting the wood. Then I used the seat frame pieces to help me space the front legs where they needed to go. I honestly don't know why, but I thought it would be neat to let the armrest overhang the front legs about a half inch here as you can see. Feel free to make these flush instead if you prefer. After these legs were attached, it was time to move on to the fun stuff, adding the dowels. I've actually added dowels to a few of my recent projects, so you may already know the drill here, no pun intended, but I used my Craig Multimark tool to mark a line three quarter inches in from the inside edge of the armrest and along the back edge of the backrest. Then I measured out five equally spaced marks along this line to add the dowels. I did the same on the side seat frame pieces and transferred these marks so that the dowel holes will be drilled at the same locations. I repeated this process on both armrests and then I did the same for the back piece and the back seat support. The front seat support won't need any holes drilled, so I just left it alone. Since I was using 3 quarter inch dowels, I used a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit to drill out holes at all of these marks on both the arm and the backrest and on the side and back seat supports. I just used a regular drill for this since I don't have a drill press and just drilled until the head of the bit was about flush to the surface of the wood. This doesn't have to be perfectly precise, just keep it as consistent as possible. Then I cut 15 dowels about 14 inches long. Now for a higher seat, you can cut them shorter and for a lower seat, you can cut them longer. Once they were cut, I just hand sanded them and took them outside to paint. I gave them all a few coats of satin black paint and made sure that all the surfaces were covered and let them dry well. While I let the paint dry on these railings, I would like to take a moment to say a big thank you to Sunday for sponsoring this video. Are you like me and find that your yard looks a little blah, but aren't sure what to do about it? Sunday can help take the guesswork out of caring for your lawn. I'm definitely not super experienced in lawn care and I prefer to simply enjoy the lawn versus work on it all the time. And that's why I love Sunday. They are your one-stop shop for lawn care and they strive to keep things as simple as possible for novices like me. All you need is a water hose and Sunday smart lawn plan. You can get your own customized plan to care for your lawn needs with their free lawn analysis. 
Simply go to their website, GetSunday.com, enter your address, and answer a few basic questions about your lawn and your preferences, and they provide you with a plan to maintain or improve your yard. Sunday can help you cultivate a rich, self-sustaining yard that is good for people and pets with simple, easy-to-understand ingredients that you can apply yourself. Take your free lawn analysis today and get started with $10 off on your own lawn care kit with Sunday by clicking the link below. Now, let's get back to the build. Once the paint was dry on these railings, I used some wood glue to insert them into the holes drilled on the armrest of the chair. And then I added some glue at the tops of these dowels and set the seat support pieces on top. I used a rubber mallet to kind of tap everything together so that the dowels went into the holes on the seat support and I checked the distance at the front and the back between the armrest and the seat support just to make sure that they were consistent. Then I used some timber screws to secure this seat support flush along the inside of the front chair leg. Now I was running low on these screws so I actually only used these at the front because they added a nice decorative touch and I used regular two and a half inch screws at the back since they won't be seen. If I had enough, I would have used these timber screws at both the front and the back. Then I repeated the same process on the opposite side of the chair. The front and back seat supports will be attached with pocket holes and screws, so I drilled pocket holes into the ends of these two pieces, one with and one without dowel holes. I glued the dowels in place on the back side of the chair just like the sides and installed the seat support the same as well except that this time I attached it using pocket hole screws. Once the sides and back were together I simply attached the front piece using pocket hole screws so that it was at the same height as the other seat supports. Now all that was left was adding the seat slats. So I actually had a, a leftover piece of two by four here um, after I cut down all of these frame pieces and the legs. So I'm going to rip this down into like two by twos so I can put like a little support strip on both sides and then I can lay the seat slats on top of those. So for the seat slats I got a 1x6 tongue and groove sear board because the tongue and groove boards were like a heck of a lot cheaper than just a regular 1x6 and honestly since these the seat depth like the distance between here is only 21 inches I couldn't have fit four solid 1x6 boards anyway because that would be 22 inches wide so I was gonna have to trim these down Anyway, so I went ahead and got the uh, tongue and groove and I'll just rip off the tongue and the groove sections. That will be perfect for the slats to give a little bit of room in between each one so water can drain out since it's an outdoor chair. So first I ripped this leftover two by four and a half to give me two pieces to actually support the seat slats in the chair. Then I trimmed them down to length and screwed them into the side seat supports about three quarter inch down from the top edge. Then I cut my tongue and groove board into four equal pieces and ripped the tongues and grooves off of each side. They ended up being about four and a quarter inches wide and I set them into the seat to make sure that they fit. I went back and screwed these in later, which you'll see in a minute, but for now, I was just really excited to try it out. Sits good, might be a little low. I probably recommend a cushion. The chair sat good and felt strong and sturdy, but it felt a little bit short. So let's make a cushion. So I have some foam and some outdoor fabric. I actually wanted like three inch foam, but the store didn't have any. So I got one inch foam and it's 72 inches long. So I can cut it in three 24 inch pieces and glue it together to make my own three inch foam. Now in hindsight, I could have made the rails a little shorter to bring the seat a little higher, but what's done is done and I can add a few inches to the seat simply by adding a cushion. I rolled out this one inch foam and cut it into 24 inch pieces using a utility knife. Then I used some simple spray adhesive to just glue these pieces together. Now the key to gluing foam together with spray adhesive is to make sure that the entire surface of both pieces are covered and allow it to get good and tacky before sticking them together. 
Now, just as a note, you'll notice that the fabric I'm about to use here is not the same fabric that you saw in the finished chair. Options for outdoor fabric at the store were pretty limited and they didn't have anything that I really liked. So I'm going to demonstrate this cushion using this blue fabric, but I thought it photographed a little bit better with a simple drop cloth fabric over the top. I'll eventually find a replacement fabric for this, but this works for now. I bought a yard and a half, so about 54 inches of fabric for this cushion and it was the perfect length to be able to make a simple envelope cover. I folded the fabric inside out like shown here so that it overlapped a couple inches in the middle. I measured across the width and adjusted the overlap until the overall width of the fabric was about 26 inches. I pinned the edges to keep them in place and measured from this edge 27 inches and pinned again. This will allow me to sew a half inch seam on both sides. I trimmed the fabric along these pins then hemmed the edge of one of the overlaps. Hemming just gives me a clean edge and prevents raveling. Okay, now I'm lazy and I don't um, usually hem the other side of the pillow. I only hem the one that's gonna be exposed and when we flip this inside out, the one that's currently hidden is the one that will be exposed. So I need to um, put that one on the bottom side then lay this one on top. Once the exposed edge was hemmed, I pinned up the two open sides and stitched along them about a half inch from the edge. Then I flipped it right side out and test fit the cushion. Okay, so moment of truth. We're gonna flip this inside out. Let's make sure the cushion fits. So it needs a little fluffing for sure. But cushion fits, but these corners, these corners are not like full, they're not nice. So we're gonna square them off. Okay, so the pillow is out and this is back inside out. And what we need to do is pull these corners up like this, pin across here and stitch. And you want where you pin to be about three inches wide. So I'm gonna lay this like this right here, measure across and pin. And I'll have to do that on every corner and then stitch right across there. The cushion fit, but since it's a square cushion, the cover will look better if the corners are squared as well. So I flipped it inside out and stitched up these corners. Once these corners were stitched, I flipped it back right side out, test fit the cushion and it was ready to enjoy. Now you can see there's square corners. So let's stick the pillow back in. Perfect. Well, I'm glad we can both fit. Uh, you too, all right. It's Lucy approved, so I think that that counts for something. After we tested it out in the shop, I moved it to the front porch and I told you I would come back and secure these seat slats, so I did. And now it's ready for Lucy and myself on occasion to enjoy it all year long. I hope you've enjoyed this project as well. And if you'd like to build your own, be sure to check out the free plans that I've linked below. And if you can't wait to see what's next, I'd love if you'd subscribe so you don't miss out on all of the upcoming projects and guest appearances from Lucy. Thanks so much for watching friends. And until next time, happy building.